Welcome to the Quip Corner with Ada. This weekend is a special one. Every day is special. But this weekend is Grandparents Day. Did you guess already? Okay. I'll be talking to an author about her book on her grandparents. You'll see her bio right after this. See you in a bit. Welcome to the Quick Corner, Miss Anna. Thank you. It's good to be back. Glad it to is really you. good to have you back. Yes. Well, as you know, today we are having a really, really special, I'd say really special edition because we're celebrating Grandparents Day. Mm. That's special to me. Yes. And I know you have a book about that. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell us the backstory? What even made you pull together a book around this topic? Well, the book is called Grandpapa. And one summer, I was in a program at the University of California, San Diego, uh, as a summer program for teachers. And we went to workshops in the morning and then every afternoon we were expected to write using one of the strategies that we were taught in the morning. It had just happened that my grandfather had passed not too long before then. And so when they asked us to recreate an experience with a grandparent, but in this case, a pie, a pie to all the five senses, the sense of sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. I said, how am I gonna recreate my grandfather with those five senses? <laughs> but a part of the program was sending us off alone on the campus with our notebooks. And as I thought about that, I realized, you know, you can recreate, recreate a person and experience with the person by thinking about them in all those ways. Mm -hmm. A few years later, one of the ladies who was in the class with me said, what did you do with that grandpapa poem? I said, what do you mean? What did I do with that grandpapa <laughs> poem? I turned it in for class. She said, that ought to be a book. I said, well, it's too short to be a book. She says, not if you have pictures. I said, where am I gonna get pictures? She said, well, hire an artist. Nice. I said, artists charge quite a bit of money. And she says, you know, if you can find an artist, I will help pay for the pictures. Aww. So I had no excuse not to make the book of my grandfather. Busted. <laughs> so, you know, I'm always challenging people and say, I'll do it if. And they'll say, if that's the only problem, I'll take care of that. Yeah, I got that part. Next. Some of you are familiar with a program called Fiverr, F-I-V-R-E-R-R. -E yes. And it's international artists mm -hmm. who offer their work. So yes. I went online. And I found Jaimini Atanayake, who is an artist from Sri Lanka. Nice. And over the next year, she and I exchanged emails until she came up with the drawings for my book. Mm. And my friend did help pay for them. And so now I have a story honoring my grandparents. But also as a teacher, I have lessons in the back for mm. families who buy the book on ways that they too can write a poem with their grandparents, about their grandparents, or for their grandparents. So the story, Ooh. a classroom assignment for teachers who became a challenge from a friend that became a book honoring my grandfather and an invitation on your program. Thank you. Congratulations. I, I really love you know, when a book is that robust. And recently, yeah, just recently, I posted a video where I was talking about mindset being everything and how we can repurpose things. So it's interesting that in that book, Honoring Your Grandpa, 
which was based on an assignment. Yes, yeah. I have re repurposed some videos where I had to do, you know, presentations at work. And I was like, oh, that works for my channel, you mm -hmm. know, and then you're encouraging other people to do likewise. Now, before we dive into the deep end, mm -hmm. why did you read something from your book to us, please? Well, thank you. The story, Grandpapa, Grandfather, or Grandpapa we called him, working at odd jobs, living out his faith. God called him to pastor, to shepherd his flock, to care for his family. Mm -hmm. Amidst the dusty pew odors and soury, mildewy hymnals, intermingled with cologne and aftershave, energine and perspiration, I see him sitting on the platform in a small rented church, his skin glistening like warm maple syrup, his billiard bald head thrown back or cocked to one side, inspired but unmusical hymns, stirring him to respond. Sometimes Grandpapa would raise his arm and wave his hand and beat time to the music, precise in restricted boundaries, like the Marine guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. Sometimes emotions would burst from his glowing face with a glow arousing, glory or hallelujah. These interruptions would startle us and amuse us, we who sit in the pews, observing like peeping toms, our grandfather's response to songs of praise, mm -hmm. songs of adoration, to the God had called him to pastor, mm -hmm. pastoring his family, providing food, clothing, and shelter. Fond memories of love and devotion for each of us and his wife for life, his wife for 65 years, loving to the end. Oh, that Bye, is beautiful. Thank beautiful. You. Wow. Nice. And one additional story with this, uh, J.M. Many does not happen to be uh, someone raised in the Christian tradition. And during the year we were exchanging pictures, I often had to share with her what I was trying to come up with. Yes. And at the end, I said, what should we use for the cover? And she said, from reading your book, this is what I see, a family mm -hmm. reading God's word together. Amen. And I amen. said, amen, God. During this time, this young lady who had not heard much about Christianity other than it was another faith, got the message mm -hmm. that a family who reads together stays together. And yes. so I'm just excited about that experience with my Giamani Atanayake from Sri Lanka. Wow, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. She did a great job with the illustrations for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you already did a really good segue to my next question. Mm -hmm. What's your message for readers? I mean, your illustrator got a message from it. What other messages do you have for your readers? For readers, probably when you think of poetry, you think about rhyme and rhythm. Mm -hmm. yes. I want you to know that a poem doesn't have to have rhyme. It doesn't have to have rhythm to be called a poem. A poem is a poem because the author has take carefully selected words to recreate an experience, mm -hmm. real or imagination, by choosing words for their sound as well as their suggestive power. And this is why I believe anyone can write a poem who carefully chooses words economically and then lays them out on the page so that the readers can re-experience that, exper that experience because the poet has chosen words carefully so that when the readers hear them, when they see them, and also when they say them. So don't be afraid of poetry. Poetry is designed to be experienced and appreciated, and we can all do it. 
if we take the time. Nice. And, you know, one thing I know, and we will share that picture, is that your book is a book for all ages. All ages. One of the things that did occur is after I wrote the book, some of the teachers at the school um, had children. And one of the young lady's son was facing some challenging health issues. And so I sent him the book and they started reading it. And she sent them in the most gorgeous picture of her two boys sitting on the sofa reading my book. And if that didn't make him well, it made me feel so much better. And uh, the same thing with another young lady uh, uh, whose book I was helping her write, said, I want that book for my granddaughters. And so she bought two, one for the whoever was reading and one for the others to look at so that she wouldn't have to keep doing this. Yes, so they so could they follow could, along. So they could follow along. And over the years since the book came out, I have found that young children like looking at the pictures and talking about it. But teenagers enjoy looking at it and find out what was life like back then. Yeah. And adults as a pattern for something to do with their own children, but also it evokes fond memories for them. And as one man said, it gave me an appreciation for my grandparents that I hadn't considered before. Mm -hmm. And so even though it's a book that I wrote to honor my grandparents and is an answer to a challenge for a friend, over the years, very young children, older children, teenagers, adults have found it worth taking the time to read. And just this past oh, summer, the artist who did not have children when we worked on this book together, sent me a picture of her son in Sri Lanka with the book sitting down, just play. He was touching the pictures. Nice. And I said, you know what? The message continues across the world. And so that's, excellent. that's what's been happening. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. A few weeks ago, someone bought my three books. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going through it, so just when you talked about, you know, touching the pictures, she was feeling the book and she was like, oh, this is really good quality. Um, you know, I also want to write a book. Mm -hmm. And I said, feel free to contact me. I'd be happy to walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who will buy your book mm -hmm. and we'll talk, we'll talk a bit more about how they can get copies. Mm -hmm. But some people who would buy your book would be like, oh, I like this. I wish I could do something like this. What's your response to that? My response to that is turn to page 30. Okay. In the book. That page says, write a poem about someone special to you and do what I did, appeal to the five senses. And for those who are working with their children, I ask them, consider writing a book with your children for your parents as a gift for the grandparents or write a book about the grandparents as a memoir for the family. But I too also coach writers, uh, Sister Ada. And one of the things that came to my mind as you asked me to be on this program for Grandparents Day was to offer an opportunity for your readers, your viewers to contact me yeah. about writing a book with my coaching we meet three times online. You would come with pictures that you have gathered and I'd walk you through the steps of preparing a book of about 24, 25, maybe 28 pages that would tell the story of an either a single experience or an mm -hmm. ongoing series of experience. And I'm just okay. calling it the Grandparents Project. Mm -hmm. One where you would write a book about grandparents with grandparents or for grandparents. And if you think your grandparent or friend would like it as a gift, you could buy the package from me and give it to them as a gift for writing their own book. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to share 
something that I do that you do, but since it's Grandparents' Day, an opportunity to write a book about a grandparent, for a grandparent, or with a grandparent. That's beautiful. That is so, so beautiful. So nicely put. Some people would be like, okay, that sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. So we'll share your email and you know mm -hmm. your contact details below this video. Mm -hmm. But some other people would say, I'd love to get a copy of Miss Anna's book. So how can people get copies of your book? My book is one of the zillion books that are offered on Amazon. So if you'll just put my name in, Anna Roseboro, my book will pop up. Among others, uh, I am a retired teacher and have had the opportunity to write several textbooks. So you may have to scroll through till you get to this particular book, but Amazon.com does sell my book and you can get it that way. If on the other hand, you'd like an autographed copy of the book, yeah. you can contact me on the email that will appear in this program. If that's the case, you will go on my website, you'll buy the book, I will autograph it and send it to you personally. So Amazon or Anna, either <laughs> way, you'll get my book. And it always has to start with A, what can I say? Ada, that's, <laughs> we're the ones. <laughs> Oh, this has been lovely, lovely. I, I, you know, I'm just still reeling from the fact that an assignment at mm -hmm. a conference resulted in a book. It just goes to show that there are so many opportunities mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it's a little thing that builds up into a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, had an opportunity to often include the reading of this poem when I'm doing poetry readings. and very early before this became a book, I was doing that. And at the end, one of the men said, may I have a copy of that? I said, this is about my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want a copy of? And this is when I realized that the poem was speaking to people mm -hmm. about their own experiences in a way that I never thought. Yeah. And this is why I encourage those of you who do write or want to write, share it. Yes. You might be the vessel by which someone develops a better relationship with a grandparent, mm -hmm. or they may become a better grandparent themselves. So yeah. read my book, of course, yes. but write your own, nice. share it. Thank Grandparents you. are great people. And as I think about this, Perhaps one of the pieces of advice that I resented most for my grandparents when I was getting it was said, do your best as unto the Lord. Mm. And I said, as unto the Lord, he says, if you see God in anyone else, he said, the least you do it, you do it unto me. Yeah. And it says, always do your best. You don't always have to do it perfectly but it should be your best. your best. And of course, over years, and I said, how do you know what my best is? <laughs> she said, it's better than this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if we were ironing clothes. Yes. And we didn't iron it smoothly. Yep. She said, that's not your best. And so she mm -hmm. would re-sprinkle it. Yep. Do it again. <laughs> we had to re-iron it. I said, she said, do your best always. Yes. And when we bring home our report cards, the first thing she would look at was our uh, behavior, citizenship. Yes. They didn't look at the academic grades first. Said the least you can do is be nice, be kind, be respectful. Nice. The grades will come. I said, colleges don't check citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, advice from grandparents. Always do your best. If you're not sure what best is, do it as unto the Lord. Nice. So, there you have it. Thank you. Thank you. You took that last question, you oh. know, out of me. So thank you for preempting me. I really appreciate it because a lot of times, you know, we talk about grandparents and it's like, 
yes, but what advice did they give you? You know, what are you holding on to? In mm -hmm. Nigeria, we say, when you get really good advice, mm -hmm. we say, hold it in your left hand mm -hmm. because a lot of us eat with our right hands. And when we eat with our fingers, we wash our hands often. And so when they say, hold something in your left hand, it's something you treasure mm -hmm. and, you know, don't want to forget in a hurry. Yeah. Grandparents, they can be with us, whether they're with us or not. Mm -hmm. And back to the book, one of the ways you can keep your grandparents with you is by writing your own book. And yeah. one of the ways you can figure out how to write it is read mine, Grandpa. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again for sharing it. We will add your contact details and your website mm -hmm. below this video so people will know how to reach out to you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to reflect on memories I had with my grandparents, and I really appreciate your inviting me to do this today. God bless well, you. God bless you too. Thank you for accepting. Otherwise, I would have had nothing for celebrating oh, grandparents. Okay. Thanks again for your time, and I'm looking forward to the next time you'll be here. Okay, <laughs> you're getting it. Good, good. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye. Welcome to the Quip Corner with Ada. This weekend is a special one. Every day is special. But this weekend is Grandparents Day. <laughs> Did you guess already? Okay. I'll be talking to an author about her book on a grandparent. You'll see her bio right after this. See you in a bit. It was fun listening to Miss Anna. And I really like the fact that an assignment at a conference ended up in a book adding value to so many people around the world. Well, the information on how to get her book would be below this video. And remember, you can write a book about your grandparents, with your grandparents, or for your grandparents. Her contact details will also be below this. See you in the Quip Corner again. Bye now. And of course, don't forget to celebrate your grandparents. Not just today, but every day. Bye now. It was fun listening to Miss Anna. And I really like the fact that an assignment at a conference ended up in a book adding value to so many people around the world. Well, the information on how to get her book would be below this video. And remember, you can write a book about your grandparents, with your grandparents, or for your grandparents. Her contact details will also be below this. See you in the Quip Corner again. Bye now. And of course, don't forget to celebrate your grandparents, not just today, but every day. Bye now. <laughs>